as you can guess, I'm back. It's a different way of doing it, looking at a screen, and then hopefully, you know, 40, 50 of you are going to be looking at it. So I'll give you a wave. Hello. And it's to all the groups in photography year one. All right, to everybody. And uh, we're going to be going through some information for the next project. You will have to bear with me because I'm going to be working from this screen. And this is you. This, And then I've got to look at this screen over here, which you can't see because it's just a recording software that we use, that I'm trying to use. I say trying because that's exactly what it is. Um, so, as I said, uh, welcome back uh, to me, to you. And we know it's a different situation, uh, but we got to make the best of all of it. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at uh, the course and what's going to be happening. So as I said, bear with me while I try and get used to this. So I think I'll just make myself a bit smaller and put myself in the middle of a galaxy. Um, apologies to those of you who are looking at this on a large screen, possibly. Uh, I'm sure it's the, the best picture. Yes, I am in a Lego room. It is my Lego room, and it's uh, you know, uh, a nice, nice place to be sometimes. If any of you have got Lego bricks, I suggest maybe from your younger years or your current years, go get them and just enjoy them. Just build stuff, just sit off, just immerse yourself in the idea of creativity, and it doesn't have to look like anything to anybody else. It can just be your response to the hand movements and bricks together. It's it's well worth doing. And what we're going to actually do now is we're going to have a look at a quick PowerPoint. So bear with me for a second. Jumping from one screen to another screen. And have a quick look at this. Okay, that seems to be coming up. Where am I going to put myself? Right, so we've done the hello bit. Um, I'll stay up there for a minute. And um, it's from not just me, it's from um, all the photography teachers. As I said, this is for everybody within the Photography Year One course. Um, we hope you're all doing well. Now, the thing about this video is it's, I don't want you to watch it all in one go. <laughs> Very simply, because that would be highly irritating. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to do it bit by bit. It has to do you for a couple of weeks. You've got to work on it. The information you might go back and forth to it. But every now and then I'll say, stop it now. You've got some work to go and get on with, whether it's for an hour or two, whether it's for a week or whatever it might be. But all the information is going to be there for you. And it's in written format as well. Sometimes the video is just a, a way of getting more of the kind of the passion side of it across. So what we'd like you to do is, it's a big question. How are you doing? All right, because there's a lot going on at the moment. And it's something that's quite important is that, you know, you kind of look after yourself, you know, as everybody has been doing, um, hopefully. And it's that, just ask you a question. It's also where are you with your technology and what have you got available? It would be quite useful to know. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to pause this video once I finish talking about this part. Um, and I'd like you to go onto your class notebook. And in there, in section eight, at the very top in your folder, you'll have a, a, a quick um, kind of a question, a couple of questions for you to answer. So I'll show you where that is quickly. Escape out of here. And if you go to your class notebook, in the very top section, in section eight, up there, just a couple of questions for you to answer. All right. Uh, no judgment, no consequences. Just, just kind of be honest. Just let us know how things are going for you. All right. Let's do a little bit more about your photography in your course book. All right. So that'd be really good if you could do that. And the video is a guide for this whole term, right? So this video is a guide for the whole term. It's not just about for this week and next week. It's about this whole project, which lasts the whole term. And we will intertwine every so often into thinking about, well, what's going to be for the, the following term? 
All right. So there is kind of little, little, not hints, but little insight into why we do this work and the way we're going to be doing it. Big changes with little impact. And that sounds a little bit bizarre at this time. I'm talking specifically with the photography field. All right. We know that there's lots of big changes around us. And some of those are positive things. And in your questionnaire, there's one or two things we'd like to think about what positives have come from the last couple of weeks for you. But with photography, we've had this big change. We've got a different way of working, different way of teaching and so forth, different way of you being kind of confined with what and how you can photograph. But don't worry. All right. And I know everybody's probably heard that a thousand times. I'm just going to talk to you about the photography course. As you all know, I've been teaching it for years and so forth. And what is important for you to know is that when we have our exam board, all right, they're the people who we report to and we, we say that here are the marks in the future when we mark your work and they'll say yes or no and give you your grade. We don't give you the grade. They are the ones that award the grade to you for your work. And every course has what's called a course specification. So that is the exam board and the qualification board. And they say from this subject, students should be able to do this, 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 this. And they should have these skills and to this level and to this level to get certain grades. All right, that's all teacher stuff. So uh, uh, course specifications, what should be the course you should be learning. There is nothing in our photography course specification that says you have to do certain things. You don't have to do documentary. You don't have to do photographing. You don't have to do cyanotypes. Right? You don't have to do portraiture, landscape, all these different genres. All right. So with this kind of change in circumstances over the last couple of weeks, I am sure that documentary photography was really difficult for you to produce a project that you are really happy with and that's that's okay because there is nowhere on the course specification that says you have to so we designed a course over the last couple of years to create a course that gives you lots of insights into the different aspects of photography we use the word genres so as you know from the beginning of the course we build our skills some of you didn't know anything about photoshop some of you knew nothing about sienna types but we build those skills together and, and our presentation improved and then from that we begin to learn about light have an impact then we move into time has an impact artificial light with flash has an impact time we did with photograms artificial light was flashed with the pinhole moving on to the darkroom process where we learned about aperture opening up that lens and letting the light through in the in larger as well as in our camera itself. So we had all of that. And then we build those skills into landscape where we're looking at genres and we're looking at composition. We move from there into looking at portraiture where we're controlling the lighting and we're engaging with people. And then we move on to the project where it's in a documentary. We're looking at how images can tell a story. All of these skills are in a, a building, building blocks. And at the end of it, you might not have liked landscape and you might have loved documentary or vice versa, or you might have found one more challenging, one easier and just got excited about it. And that's brilliant because at the end of this year, so when we finish section eight, it's where you choose your own topic for next year. So you, you, you're you fine. You, you just build on the skills that you already have. All right. So to recap, please don't worry about the course. You're not losing out on anything. There's nothing specific. The exam board isn't going to sit you down and say, answer 15 questions on the history of photography, 20 questions on landscape. Right? That's not how this course works. We go with what we've got. We build on it for next year. OK, when our June term, that's where we begin to produce work that's going to be formally assessed. All right. And but you pick your time. So big changes, actually little impact. Just changes in the way we're working. The impact is not going to be anything negative for us. So power of images. All right. Uh, I didn't obviously get a chance to teach you in it, but documentary photography is my forte. It's what I did my master's in. I have had a chance to see some of the work. There are, there are some good stuff coming through. I haven't seen it all because I know your deadline is on Friday, which is um, hopefully when this video is going to be 
and it's going to talk to you. So it's an interesting project. It's challenging because we're thinking about what these images do or when we put them together and so forth. It's time consuming, but very difficult when it's locked down. All right. Please submit what you've got. All right. Just show us what you've got because it helps us to see an insight. So please have it uploaded. Have it there so the teachers can give you some feedback on it. It's really important to us. All right. Whatever you have. All right. We're not putting in consequences. We're not doing anything like that. We just want to see what you've been working at and how you've been working and hopefully see that building blocks, all right, building up. And I'm not just talking about building blocks because I'm surrounded by loads of Lego, but it's how we build the course. So moving on from there, we're going to move on to the, the next topic. So I'd like at this point to pause the PowerPoint and our video and upload whatever you've got. Make sure it's there for us. We've got our time allocated to go and give you some feedback on it. So make sure it's there, please. Pause and then come back to me in a second. So welcome back. Hope you haven't done that job for me. Brilliant. <coughs> Excuse me. So our next topic, section eight, beyond traditions. Now, beyond traditions, what's that all about? Well, it's photo art. All right. And we've done, done this project in a very particular way. We talked about next year, how you're picking your own topic. So next year is very important that you understand that we're going to be building on the, your maturity of skills, your independent skill building, where you are not being spoon fed. And my students, you'll know, at the beginning, I held up that spoon and it went flying. Because we have to, because after A-levels is university or work, all right? And both of those places require and really embrace people who are independent, that they know they don't have to be told what to do bit by bit. They don't have to be told, oh, you finish that job, go do this job, go do this job. They want independent people in the workforce who are pro positive, proactive and moving forward. Universities, they won't spend all that extra amount of time with you working on, you know, oh, have you done this? Oh, you haven't done it yet. Oh, can you do it by Friday? No, it's just straightforward. OK, you've lost out on that whole year. All right. So this project is getting you ready for our next part, which is year year two but it's where we start assessing your work formally for the exam board it's independent project as you pick they're called personal investigation so photo art is going to be our trial run to see hopefully next year is going to be suitable for you that you can work independently you will get input you will get kind of like feedback and so forth but you have to go do this stuff to get the feedback on i'm going to tell you in one go everything needs to be done and you have to apply that independent working to be able to say, OK, I'm going to get this done by then and I'm going to move forward. And actually, I wasn't told to do this bit of research, but I'm going to do it because it could be useful. Right. And that you're not going to just do one thing minimally is that you're going to push yourself to build right, and to be proud of your work. Because next year, it's very important. 20 people in the one group are all working on different topics. Right. You have to be proactive and being able to move forward while other people are having one-to-ones. So that's specifically why we do this project now. Photo art is the best opportunity for that. Now, all of this work is on Class Notebook. It's all laid out for you there, and it's in your folders, and it's going to have the dates and guidelines and so forth. So it's all there waiting for you to go and work on it. Now, going back to that previous um, thing that you did for us, where you gave us some information about the technology you've got access to, those of you who said, yes, you've got smartphones, some of you don't have laptops or PCs, it can, can all be done on smartphones, right? So you've got, you can download all those apps and we'll show you in a few minutes where you can get those that you need. And they're all free and they come through the college email. This project can be lots of fun, all right? You're going to just develop and explore and record and present, all right? Their keywords we'll come to in a minute. But it can be fun because Everything's going, everybody's going to be doing different things. But it's not, I'd like you to, to challenge yourself, and especially with this little bit of, for some of you, you're going to have that little bit of extra time, right? I know some of you are going through situations where you can't put a lot of time into your work, right? But as much as you can would be brilliant. But for some, you've got a lot of time. And here is where we can start exploring and trying different things and having fun with it. 
it's not it's, it's, this isn't just about you know serious documentary and so this is a different type of work and it might be the type of work that you want to do next year develop explore record present now you've seen those words all right and they've been on your feedback form since the start of the year and why i keep putting these words in every so often is that these are the words that we use for you next year we specifically assess you on these words and they come down if you remember in the classroom i know you haven't been there for a couple of weeks uh, you got those things stuffed down and there are all these words on them in the big grid right these are the four key words that we assess you with remember when we assess we aim to give as many marks as we can for you you do the work we'll give the marks right but again it's building up the skills for next year but just remember those words you're going to be submitting your work in PowerPoint. Now, I know with Joe's group, you've been maybe doing that before and so forth. We're all going to do it in PowerPoint, but there's slight little changes which will come to. And it's just about making it easier for your teacher to give feedback and for you to have it there live and working constantly. All right. So little tweak, Joe's group, little tweak as well. But we'll come to that. In a few minutes. So let's go and have a look then. Let's, what is photo art? I've been mentioning it a few times, beyond traditions. We're leaving that traditional way of working with photography and we're going to go to and i'm going to say it now before i forget you can take new photographs for this project you can use photographs that you use for other projects you can use photographs that you've taken over the last couple of years in some cases you can use other people's photographs right this project has got lockdown flexibility right it's it's so much you can use stuff for magazines you know it's there's lots that can happen here just wanted to say it now before i forget so it's any type of images that can be used so let's as i said let's go and have a look then so on your screen let me move myself out of the way a little bit there out of the way so uh, in section eight beyond traditions you're going to have this which we've already talked about your checklist and feedback form so this is all that we're going to be going through please fill it in it really helps when it's filled in at the top remember to have meaning in your work is a big importance for this your aims and objectives are there i'm not going to read them to you i'm going to give you a second to read them now No, camera didn't freeze. I was just saying still. Have you finished? Pause me if you haven't finished. Oh, read through them. So that's kind of the key. And you'll see those keywords in bold and underline. Not underline, just in bold. So um, you've got your deadline, which is the 19th of May for this project. Right. But we want to be able to give you feedback as you're going along. And we've got all those sections in there bit by bit. All right. So this whole project. We'll just quickly go down the dates are slightly different and the last one isn't on a friday it's a tuesday we want you to, to submit your work all right and keep your bibliography as you go and please fill in these at the end all right make sure that they're done it really helps us to, to see how you're thinking about your work and progressing it so uh if we look down into this section no this section over here now all right so we're looking at the feedback form um cover page brilliant you know how to do them at this stage get the aims and objectives in then you've got uh, mood boards i know we could put in powerpoint we got six photographs on one mood board all right but it's not really telling showing that you've done much exploration all right into the world of photo art so try and build on those so the whole project is based around the idea that artists work Give me one second, right? So the whole project is based around the idea that artists, right? So creators, visual creators, use photographs, right, to try and convey a meaning. They want to say something. Sometimes it can be political, sometimes it can be fun and quirky, sometimes it's personal and passionate, sometimes it's it's a global thing. They they use their images in a way to express. That's really important in this work. 
we've got lots of examples for you to have a look at, all right? And I'd like you to spend time, break it up, don't do it in one go, because there's a lot we're giving you. I want you to spend time just quickly reading through some of the statements that are underneath the artist, because it explains why they've done something, or it's explaining how they've done something. Take time in choosing your two artists. Now I say two, because that's a minimum. There's a bit of a hint in there, we'd like you to build, we'd like you to explore a bit more. But don't just look at the photograph and say, oh, I like the image, and I'm, I'm going to do that. I want you to look at why they're doing it and how they're doing it. All right, so it's how they're taking the images, why they're taking the images, what they do, do to the images. Because photo art can be before the photograph is taken, the setup. It can be during the photographing something that they're doing technically, and it can be afterwards, something that they do to the final image digitally or physically, or it can be all three of those. So it's a whole big spectrum of areas and ideas, right? So you're going to have to look at one artist, and you're going to have to research about them and, and convey that you have explored their work and that you understand it and give some kind of comments on it. Remember what our five C's that come in very handy? Content, composition, context, comparison. There's another one in there that I forgot, composition. Um, use those as a guideline, all right? Because it shows that you're doing the research. And then you've got to try their approach, whether it's the pre-photography, the, during the photographing, or after the photographing, or when you printed the photograph. Any of those processes, try their processes. You don't have to mimic them exactly. It's just maybe it's about the way they elongate the photographs over a long exposure and move in the camera. Maybe it's about you know, photographing through different materials, halfway through the lens. Look, the list is endless, endless. Explore, try to then show how you do it, show what you've done, show what it looks like, and then review it, refine it, comment on it, okay? Or reflect on it. Then you go pick a completely different artist and you do the same again. And then the, the aim is at the end of this project, you combine the two techniques. It could be completely different images from the samples that you've tried, completely different. But combine those two techniques to present your output. Okay, so you're saying what your output is and you got, you're commenting on that. And that's really important is that why, why have you done this body of work? What is the meaning between your techniques and the final outcome? What are you trying to say with this? It's really important, really important that you try and get that across. And as I say, these ideas, what am I going to say with my work? It could be a political statement. Please keep it something that we could display on the college website. It could be a current affairs issue. It could be your personal opinion. It could be a personal passion of yours. It could be a... Um, a global phenomenon. It could be just something you want to say or reflect on or comment on or support. Right? So we've there's lots of kind of influencers influencers and stuff out there. You know, if you're gonna look at one of them, it picks maybe something positive, especially you know, if you're working at home on this, positivity is something that can be much more uplifting at this point. So as I said, you have your feedback form there. Well, I minimize myself. So you have your feedback form. It's got all the dates in it. We want your comments in it. All right. And then the, the final piece to give you what we're looking for examples. So what I've said about the project is in this page in brief kind of bullet points and so forth. So that's for you to read over at your own convenience. And we'll look at the artist technique in a bit, but the PowerPoint. Remember we talked about it the last time, how we want you to work on the PowerPoint. So let me see what this is. Sorry, I'm just trying to minimize that, but it's not going to work. So I'll go over there for a second. So, oh, oh, oh yeah, over this way. These cameras are confusing. Um, we've got your PowerPoint instructions. All right, so I want you to type your name there and you'll see why in a minute. So 
oh, as I said, all these apps are available for you at home, right? And so it's really useful that you've got all of them. So when you log into your email, you might come up with a page like this. Depends what device you use. But you can search for PowerPoints. You can click on your waffle button, we call that. Go to PowerPoints. Okay? Or if you can't find it there, you can view in all apps. Now, what's important uh, is that we we've already provided you through your email with all the apps which can be downloaded onto your desktop. So you can download the online version of PowerPoint, Word, and so forth. These are the ones we want you working from. So on your computers, you might already have um, Word and all these things. When you're doing work for us, can you please do it on the online version? So you can either download the app and do it that way, so it, it automatically saves on your OneDrive. Do it from your own version on your desktop, then you can only send it as an attachment, and we can't edit it without having to resave it and send it back. So with your PowerPoint, right? Either use it from here or download the apps, and you can do that on mobile, tablet, and on your PC. Download them, but work through the ones that are linked to your email. Again, as I said, use a waffle button, find PowerPoint. If it's not there on display, use the all button. Create a PowerPoint. And up in this top section, this is where you're going to put your name, and you're going to put photography, and you're going to put section eight. You just double click on that bar, and then that will give you the, what you need. Then you're going to share it, and there's a very specific way of sharing it, which makes it much easier for us. So click the share button, click on the top bar, people can edit, and you're going to specify who, anyone with this link, right? Then you apply. And then you copy it. You don't send it to us. You copy it. You copy that link. And then you go back to your class notebook and in your folder, in the PowerPoint section. So make sure you go to your folder, highlight that bit of text, go to the link button up here, and then copy and paste. So you'll have your name already typed in. You'll have highlighted it, copy and paste the link. Or if I paste the link that you've already copied into there. And then what that will give us is that will give us a link directly to your file. We can edit it and give you feedback. So rather than us having to download loads of versions and send back and so forth, here's an interactive one where we can say, brilliant page, what about this photographer? And we can just type in a different color. You don't have to save it, it saves automatically. We don't need to save it, it saves automatically. All right really, really helpful way of you just sharing your work in a live format. OK, read through that again. Take your time. But remember, use the PowerPoint version that comes through your email or the apps that you downloaded onto your own device. So I'm going to pause there and I'm going to ask you to go and do that now, please. So hopefully you've done that now and you've come back to me. Please make sure it's done. All right. Pause now. If you haven't done it, go ahead and then do it. Because the next bit we've got quite a lot to go through. So we're on our artist research, artist and techniques page now. And as I said, we've got lots. I'm going to see if I can minimize this. Bear with me. There we go, I knew there was a way of doing it. And then move myself out of the way. Whoosh. So there's lots in here that we want you to go through. Have a quick read of that now. Did you notice a bit? We're not going to show you some students' work. We really want you to just bring out your inner creativity in this. And that's really important to us, that it's, it becomes your project. And um, we talked about this already. You're exploring, you're trying different techniques. And again, it's to have fun. So you can download this PDF document if you find it easier to view it by itself. And uh, if this click doesn't, if it doesn't work on this icon here, uh, just click on this one. There and it brings you to the proper page on Moodle. 
but you should be able to download it because it reset this one. Now, there is one in the one on Moodle, which is about burning photographs, right? You know me, but some of you do anyway. My pet hates, one of them is people burning photographs. Can you please just not do it? No burning photographs. It's not in this PowerPoint slide or PDF document, but it is in the one on Moodle. So in there is where we've got a huge amount to talk to you about with the work, and we're not going to read through it. But we're going to look at that you're getting some information about the artists, why and how they're doing it. And the amount of techniques in here are huge, right? They're absolutely huge. So as I said to you, take time going through this. Maybe go through 20 pages in one go. Leave it for a half an hour. Then do another 10, right? But just spend a bit of time just trying to understand the artists and why they're doing things. Because remember, you're going to be trying minimum of two different artists and their techniques and then you're going to be trying yours as well all right so sometimes it's a technical process sometimes it's an alteration to the image afterwards and sometimes it's about how we set up an image all right because that is still photo art you are controlling the contents of the image so if you're controlling it then you're saying something about it and that's kind of the important thing so what more can I say? Well, it is a project that can be really fun, really creative, and it's it's one that's going to to challenge you to work in a different way, right? Yes, I know, quite uncomfortable in that one, but read into it. Why did they do it? And when we have, let's say, simplistic ones like this, I challenge you not to go with the easy option to get the job done. Okay, I challenge you because it is it's one of those things. Now, we could tell you a load of different techniques and we could do all of that and we could give you YouTube videos, 10 different techniques which you can do during lockdown in photography. And we thought about it and and we, we, we decided no, because we want you to go and research, right? Because you know yourselves better and your situations and where you're working and so forth, all right? So it's, it's about you researching ideas for yourself. And we're going to... You know, we're going to challenge you when it comes to, let's say, images like this. Well, how are you going to show us that you've refined that technique that you've explored? The same with this one. How are you going to show us kind of the quality of your work rather than just blah, move on? OK, so we're going to want to see that in your work, your journey. And again, with this one, very creative, using projection markers. But we only want to see stuff that we, you know, we don't want to see stuff that we wouldn't see on a beach, let's say, when it comes to the ball. All right. And then models over the age of 18. So we've got loads of different techniques. So please spend, as I see, Joe said to you, there's lots that you need to go through and have a look. So what more did I want to say? Well, I'm not sure. I think I have covered most things. Bear with me, I'll just have a quick look at the screen. Cover that PowerPoint is done. Yeah. Let's just go back to a different background. Apologies. So we're at that point now where you're ready and you have everything you need for the next, oh, I think it's four and a half weeks. So Deadline, 19th of May. Lots to do and lots to try. Lots of techniques, lots of resources to maybe think about. Keep an eye on the recycling bin, believe it or not. I know it sounds a little bit, you know, GCSE and so forth and year seven, but there is stuff in there that you can use to adapt with your image making. It can be images that you've already taken that you for projects that you've took in the past. It can be images you're going to take now. They can be done on the phone or on a camera and it can sometimes be images by other people right so there's a huge amount there for you that i want you to try i want you to have fun with the project but i want you to document it i want it, we want to be able to give you credit for the work that you're doing independently and that word independently is very important for when it comes to next year because it's where you're going to be working on your own self-chosen self-driven self-motivated project so that's where we want to see the skill set coming through. 
So folks, I'm looking forward to the time where we're back in the same building. All right, and we're chatting, we're talking about stuff differently. Email your teachers if you've got questions. All right, so direct email, please. All right, um, and if you've got questions, try and make them clear and concise. And if you've got multiple, put them in in one go. All right, we're here to help. We're providing you with the resources. You've got everything that you think you need at this point. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. All right. And some of that I'll hear back from you with your when you filled in the form. All right. So I'm going to zone out of this cosmic world and try and disconnect and now upload this video. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and look for the positives.